what really is AWS? So when you build a VPC network, there is no network being built. When you uh, create a Lambda function, there is no new compute being deployed. All of this stuff, those are kind of skewmorphs, like uh, even analogies for a big configuration of these actions and how they're configured, okay? So when you're, when you're thinking about this, just forget all that. A VPC network isn't a network. It's just a configuration made up of actions, okay? Same thing with EC2, same thing with everything else. So what other kinds of policies might there be? A bunch. Uh, and we're gonna talk, where is my, is it this one? Yeah, here we go. Okay, so back to the AWS docs. We've got some policy types. So identity-based policies, which is really what I was talking about so far. Attach and manage inline policies to IAM identities. Okay, well, and resource-based policies. So these are the policies that grant stuff. They typically give you like allows. Okay, so if I go back here to, uh, by, by which I mean, you know, ways to get around the denies, right? The default deny. Let's take a look just for a second at one of these AWS managed policies, okay? Uh, and let's uh, do, do, take a look at policy versions. So I really like looking at these uh, uh, policies. And actually, this one's a little bit, I want to find a simpler one for you if you're not familiar with these. And I don't want a full access. Uh, maybe Amazon Chime user management. Okay. Yeah, we got eight versions of that one. Um, all right, if, you, if we take a look at this policy definition, uh, you're not seeing in the action list, right? That's the actions. You're not seeing any stars. You're seeing an enumeration of all the things that are needed for this. And then it's saying on any resource of that type. And that's a really common pattern when working with IAM. Because otherwise, if you start like having different IAM policies that point at different resources, you end up with a proliferation of policies, okay? And that's one of the bad, bad things because you get out of step on version, uh, you know, all kinds of things can happen. Now, one other point about why you don't want any star actions. They add actions, right? Uh, EC2 was not born with 400 actions. It wasn't even a 10th of that. So if you have a star in your policy, and that service is accumulating new actions, you're inheriting all that accumulation without necessarily having any idea what they're uh, potentially giving your uh, IAM policies access to, okay? So lots of reasons not to use STAR. Uh, uh, it, 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 do what AWS says here, imitate them, use the AWS managed policies as ways to learn about this, okay? All right, um, but let's go back to talking about policy types. So now you can get into some other stuff, permission boundaries. All right, that policy defines the maximum permissions that the identity-based policies can grant to an entity, but it does not grant permissions. All right, so what we're doing there is we're starting to filter back out what the IAM uh, re, uh, identity policy granted. So going back to our diagram, so we've got all these allows, right? But what if we have some policies in here because we don't want necessarily every user with that IAM role. Let's say this IAM role here is called developer. Well, some developers might should have access to all those things and maybe some teams shouldn't have access to all those things, right? But you don't want like developer V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 47, 923. I see a lot of that. In, 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 uh, so you can use these other policies to put denies in. So maybe just this one can go through here, right? And so what, the way I want you to think about policy is you're giving and you're taking away and there are lots of ways to do these things. Not so many ways to tell uh, AWS what's allowed. There are a few. IAM is the primary one. 
with these access policies. But there are lots of places you can say no, all right, th further through that policy stack. So you cannot understand IAM without understanding these other kinds of policies that can then be used to kind of choke things back down or orient them in a different way. So permission boundaries, I can turn off certain access. Organization uh, uh, SCPs, right? A service control policy is kind of like a master deny list that an organization can push out to accounts. So even if you make an IAM policy that says I can do FUBAR and BAS, if the organizational SCP says, no, you can't, then you're going to hit a wall there. ACLs are largely a figment of a, 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 a what, what's the word I'm looking for, a, a, a result of the history of AWS, kind of pre, things like S3, ACLs were initially the only way you could restrict access to them before they got all kinds of new features. Uh, ACLs came out before IAM. I wouldn't worry about ACLs unless you're dealing with uh, a whole lot of um, legacy, legacy stuff, okay? And then session policies. You can, you can uh, have these uh, temporary uh, assume roles and uh, federated user roles uh, for, for a session. And so that's another one.